What is your formative story uh, or stories? We all have them. Uh, we, when, when people ask us, tell me about yourself, or when, even when we think about our history, we, we piece it together with important stories from our lives. Uh, we have those f- formative go-to stories that, that make up who we are and how we view ourselves and how we view the world. They can be good things, they can be bad things, but there's these formative stories. Well, we're spending several weeks in the formative story of Israel, Exodus. We'll be in this book, the second book of the, the, the Bible, Exodus, for the next several weeks. And I would invite you to go back, if, uh, if you haven't done it, and read just the first two chapters of Exodus. We're not going to do it right here, but just go back and read the first two chapters of Exodus. It shouldn't take you very long. See, what happens is, these, the Hebrew people or the Israelites after uh, have have moved to to Egypt. They have settled there after a famine, and uh, they've been brought there by this guy named Joseph. Joseph has brought his family there, and they've prospered in Egypt. And this all happened in the in the previous book, Genesis, this first, first book of the Bible, and and starting in Exodus, and things kind of go downhill. The Hebrew people are enslaved and they are oppressed by the Pharaoh. And if you read those first two chapters of of Exodus, God is barely mentioned. It's kind of strange. You're like, the Bible, how could God barely be mentioned? Well, he is. And it forces us to ask the question, it forces the Hebrew people to ask the question, where is God? Why is he silent? Where is he when we cry out to him? Does he not see our oppression, our enslavement, how we're treated cruelly? Where is he? We may ask the same type of questions. Where is God when my life has gone down the toilet? When catastrophe hits? In the midst of COVID? When I've lost my job? When depression hits? Why does God remain silent? And God seems to remain silent in these first few chapters of Exodus. And it might be a shock to you. Maybe you've never heard this before. Maybe you've been actually told the opposite. But the silence of God is just a normal part of the disciple's life. Normal Christian walk. Now, maybe God isn't actually silent. Maybe it's an issue of like us not hearing him or it just seems silent. I don't know. That's almost kind of like splitting hairs. But there are times when we hear nothing, when we struggle to hear from God. There's nothing wrong with your faith. It doesn't seem, there's nothing wrong with you if you're not hearing at the moment. Exodus tells us, wait, wait. Because something very exciting comes at the end of the first two chapters of Exodus. Verses 24 and 25. Listen to this. And God heard the Hebrew people's groaning and remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw the people of Israel and God knew. God knows and God sees even when it doesn't seem like it. God knows and God sees, God hears even when it doesn't seem like it. I'll tell you, we've been talking about, up to this point, we've been talking heavily about discipleship, being a disciple of Jesus. And we can know that we are maturing and growing in our faith with Jesus Christ when we can say, I don't feel. I don't hear God right now, but I know he's there and I trust him. I will wait on the Lord. This is how the Apostle Paul deals with his sufferings in Romans chapter 8. He says, I wait patiently. I wait patiently on the Lord knowing knowing that I can't see all things, but God does. Only God can. God knows and God sees you. God knows and God sees what you're going through. Remember that this week. And just as important, share that with somebody else who needs to hear it. And I'll see you next week. Many blessings.